We're in conversation with Greg Abbott, head of data arts travel practice, and my frequent companion in speculating on where the industry is going, what travel demand looks like, and I thought I'd ask him a few questions because it sounds like reading news, popular press, that um, travel is back, whether it's back to where it was before the pandemic or back to some kind of new normal and what it means for travel and travel tech in particular. That's what I'm hoping to explore today. So Greg, thanks for agreeing to spend a few times. So what, do, what, what does it look like? What is, is travel back and to what levels? Well, first of all, thanks for asking. It's been a rough year, let's say, for travel. No, we've uh, noticed. I, I'll always remember the day, you know, what was it, March 14th, the day that the world stopped traveling. Uh, and uh, I also liked when you reached out, you said uh, travel's revival. I, I think that's a very hopeful look. Uh, a lot of people call, call it recovery. Uh, I prefer to use revival, but I think that it is coming back uh, for, for sure. Um, how quickly is probably the key question. So uh, the recovery is slow. There's a lot that happened. The industry was turned on its head. And uh, and I, I feel like now what we're experiencing, or a lot of our clients are experiencing is, is that um, the charts that they depended on in the past really don't dictate what's happening now at present mm -hmm. and how travel's coming back. And so it's a, a lot of un uncharted territory. Can you give us a few examples of the rules of the past that do not necessarily yeah. apply to today? Yeah, it's it's um, dive into that a little bit more and unpack it. Really, if you can imagine, data was an important component to decision making across the board. And um, that was how people are traveling, when people are traveling, how people are searching, what was the price of the past and what are they willing to pay for the future? All of that data has kind of been flushed. Um, mm -hmm. If you can imagine revenue management, which was invented by uh, the aviation sector has really has almost been reinvented. Um, they, uh, not to say that those in the uh, revenue management technology sector haven't quickly adopted, but the way that they've had to adopt has been based on um, how people are searching and who's searching. Uh, sectors are, are performing quite differently. Business travel is not performing as expected. It was one of those things where business travel forecasting was so within a, a percentage point of, of sort of forecasting and predicting month by month right. uh, demand. It's gone. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I think that uh, the data that, that was relied upon is, is gone. In fact, we ran recently, I don't know if you got a chance to listen to it, but a webinar on siloed data and this topic of sort of how search patterns have changed, even behavior of, of, uh, of people searching for travel. It used to be three weeks out, four weeks out, people were looking for tickets. Now people are looking between one and three days. Um, mm -hmm. People are changing, so uh, they're changing their travel plans more frequently. There's a lot of more flexibility that's had to be built in. It used to be that you paid for flexibility. Now it's kind of expected that you have a flexible ticket because who knows what restrictions might come out. And I also think um, there's still a long way to go before international travel comes back uh, to where it was. I, I think statistically I was looking that we're even still at, at 5% of of uh, and really, that's a U.S. focused number, but uh, five percent yeah. of where we were previously. So we have a long way to go. It, it, it makes sense that business travel as a sector is not where it was, to, maybe never, never will be. But sort of anecdotally, it feels like there's there's got to be some pent up demand for in person meetings, maybe events, conferences, mm -hmm. trade shows. And so, are you seeing that? Are you, are you seeing looking six to twelve months out? Are people planning big gatherings again? Yeah, I think there's really, you're, you're right, this sort of idea of pent-up demand uh, is there. Um, it's certainly hitting in leisure. Um, we're at summertime. You can see that, uh, you know, hotel occupancy rates here in the United States, um, uh, STR reported that the majority of uh, U.S. hotels are at 90% of where they were in 2019, which is a significantly good good sign. Yeah, it's it's um it's good. You also have this this um really booming uh, short term rental market. Uh, you, you yourself may have have snuck away to uh, get out of the quarantine bubble at uh, a local um, short term rental. We we've really seen uh, that industry pick up, and uh, it was already a hot industry. Airbnb kind of broke through and really made uh, its mark. But the number of um, <clears throat> players in that particular sector has really been hot. So we see there are sectors that are really um, starting to perform well. We do know that events are starting to come back. We, we're seeing our clients attend events. We're, we're attending events with our clients. So things are coming back there. 
the way that they're done, the form that they're done, how uh, the gates to get there, those types of things are still being worked out. I think we're seeing a lot of uh, technology tools and automation play a role in helping travel uh, come back. Um, I wanted to ask you also sort of reading the news and you, you, you hear reports like airlines can't hire enough pilots and service mm -hmm. workers and restaurant sectors are slow to come back and, and, and so forth. And I imagine it affects big chunks of hospitality industry, broadly yeah. speaking. You, do you and other travel leaders think it's temporary or this is sort of the catalyst for more automation? Will the servers in the restaurants be replaced by automated food delivery or not? I don't, I don't know, but how, how, is, how is technology playing a role here? Well, it's a, it's a, a great point that you've uh, underlined the uh, bottleneck in staffing uh, and finding uh, resources um, to come back after being furloughed or laid off or changing industries. Uh, it's really been, I think, uh, the hospitality industry uh, has been hardest hit. <clears throat> But what we've noticed is this trend to automate um, everything from the check-in process uh, to baggage delivery. I mean, I envision in the future there's going to be, you know, the, the, the bots that have been selling for a while that do the luggage delivery and the job of the porter uh, are probably here to stay. I think there's going to mm -hmm. be a lot more automation in that particular sector. Now, whether you can automate, you mentioned pilots, I doubt we're anywhere near uh, self-driving uh, airplanes, but I think right. that you're going to see uh, automation throughout um, the hospitality sector to take some of those activities and, and find ways to um, really proliferate what's already been done by a few of the, the leaders in the, in the sector. Citizen M Hotels, I can think about, has been has had automated check in check in for a decade. So I think right. I think it's just become a lot more prevalent now. Uh, and I think there's a real race for uh, talent in the industry. A lot of the best players um, couldn't wait around, didn't wait around, got offers in different sectors. And so there's kind of this brain drain that's gone on in the sector. And there's really a need for uh, technology leaders to step in and play a role and uh, attract um, teams and partners to be able to get the job done because there's still a long way to go for digital transformation to take its full impact in the industry and to give us get us traveling, um, all traveling again. You, you speak with dozens and dozens of travel clients, some clients of ours or travel uh, practitioners, if you look sort of sector by sector, what they're mm -hmm. talking about in terms of what they need to do and how they need to do about it, what they invest to, and if you, you know, what I, what what were OTAs broadly speaking asking us to do before the pandemic, and how's that changed now versus you know airlines or hospitality? Maybe not just about us, but broadly in the industry. Okay, well, that's a it's a big question because the industry is really broad, right? For four trillion prior to COVID, I'm not quite sure what it is right now, but a uh, large industry. So sector by sector, what do we see? Aviation is really adopting uh, uh, some of the sort of old walled gardens and old guard are dropping and the entrepreneurship thinking is starting to drive change through the organization. There are a lot more will willing to listen to uh, some of the partners, some of the products that perhaps before they, they felt were lower priority. I think the, uh, you know, the ability for those companies to adopt some of those uh, hypotheses into actual, actual actionable technology that impacts uh, travelers will um, distinguish the leaders from the laggards. And in hospitality, uh, it's really the sort of big chains seem to have the power at uh, at present, and it's really a geographic market by geographic market. So the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, chains have a real advantage over European independents who uh, are struggling probably the worst. Um, in terms of uh, ground transportation, like the car, the car rental industry is really going through quite a crazy time. You've probably yeah. tried to rent a car and had it be one hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars. I recall the person trying to rent in Hawaii at a thousand dollars a day. So, yeah. uh, you know, this is really uh, an effect of the. Uh, broken supply chain. Um, and uh, we're not sure when that's going to come back. But I think the uh, car, car um, 
rental organizations that have cars to rent are benefiting from this sort of supply demand Keynesian crisis, Keynesian economic yeah. crisis. <laughs> and, uh, and then ground transportation seems to be uh, quite healthy in general. So mobility market uh, seems to be moving uh, quite well. Um, not sure what other industries I'm missing. I'm sure I'm missing uh, a number of them. But uh, so again, you can see uh, it's it's sort of hit or miss. Business travel, as we've already spoken about, is is yeah. still uh, probably the, in the worst shape. Or the cruise industry has been given the green light, and yes, they are starting again. And I think that there's uh, a, a real welcome <laughs> to uh, to to getting them back in the water. And there's a lot of really loyal customers uh, that are are lining up to go on. I think the booking uh, numbers are quite high for future cruises, and I think there's a uh, you know sort of a, a mandate to have only vaccinated passengers on cruises by by uh, some of the cruise lines. And that's probably going to uh, make for a faster return to voyaging. So my last question to you is sort of on the, on the, on the tech side and more specifically on the tech talent side, because what we've yeah. seen across our company and across the industry is while the pandemic was raging and travel was kind of down, um, IT went through a dramatic upswing and it's manifested yeah. itself IT elsewhere, that is, and it manifests itself in a pretty bloody uh, war for talent here in the States and across the, across the world. And now travel is coming back with its own demand and new capital, new projects, new ideas, but they need to rejoin this war. And the, the battlefield is already pretty littered with, with bodies. Any thoughts on how travel plans to attract good talent? What are the arguments? What are the lines of winning this this battle? Uh, it's a it's a great question, Alexi. I, I think um, you know really what you see is some of the companies that uh, aggressively held on to their employees, some of the leaders mm -hmm. in the market that uh, really um, fought to keep their people uh, over a, a long period of sort of uncertainty uh, are in a much better position than those that released um, tons of people. There were companies that really didn't have that choice. I think, the, again, the business travel sector. And I think what this is going to do is force uh, these companies to really use technology and automation uh, to deal with some of the shortages in terms of staffing. And it's also going to make them be very clear with their value proposition to employees in the market. Uh, and then third thing we've seen is obviously they're looking for really great partners uh, to help them along the way to be able to run sort of hybrid models to where they're not, you know, vendor lock in at the same time, they can start to slowly recuperate and bring on uh, staff. Uh, it, thankfully travel is a really fun place to work. Uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a great, um, sort of aspirational place to, uh, to, to, uh, to meet, uh, wonderful people. So it's an easy industry to recruit within, but at the same time, you're right. There's a real, uh, uh demand uh, shortage or sorry, sorry, supply shortage for, uh, great talent. Greg, thanks as always for your time and the insight. I hope we can do it every few months because things seem to be changing so fast. Thanks, Alexi. Thanks Appreciate the call.